Hey folks and happy new year to you all. Throughout the festive period and into the new year I continue to pull my van completely back to a body shell in order to get it ready for its many mammoth transplants including new engine, new gearbox, new wiring loom, new van basically. In the last episode we disconnected and removed the old engine and gearbox. At the same time as this I was also in the cab stripping that completely down and removing it of all of its horrific ambulance electrics. So this video will bounce in between the major parts of the last and I'll show you what happened on the interior during the main strip down. Living full time in a van for so long you do get used to the more traditional ways of doing things like having a finite amount of electric, not having a flushing toilet and for your morning brew having to boil the kettle on a hob. So being in the new unit reintroduced us to some of life's modern contraptions. The strip down here had only just begun. The engine had started to be unplugged but was still in the van. And I made a start pulling the floor in, seats and trim out so I could get to those horrible wiring looms. Just start to pull the mega loom apart. Do all this. There's only a handful of these that are actually the van. The rest is all stuff put in afterwards for the ambulance. And it's all going. And of course we've got this mess here. Again, all ambulance. This spaghetti is where I had to disconnect and reconnect all the um, lights and ignition barrel and all that. And all that is now going to be redundant. But in order to get it all out, I've got to. Yeah, and I've also got to try and make sure I can still connect the batteries because it all comes into here. This is like the main hub. So I've got to temporarily rig something so that I can still be in the back and have power. Oh dear. What a headache. Headache's a good way to describe this job, if not a little underrated. NHS ambulances are famous for having literally miles of cable in them. And I had to go through all of it, as well as the bodges that the ambulance service has done, the bodges that I've done, the conversions to turn it into a camper van, and all the, the changes I've done over the years. Figure out what everything does, disconnect what wasn't needed, and label up and try and reconnect the things I did need, as well as keeping it out of the way while we did the loom swap of the Mercedes loom. Are you keeping on track? I, I wouldn't blame you if you're not, I'm not. Oh, it was horrible. All the old air suspension shit. These are dead. Find out where they're going. Mm, oh god. And even now, years after its service, tucked in the depths covered in dust were still little morsels of the van's history. Which, considering its history, is pretty gross. <sighs> okay, what we're going to do is completely ignore the fact that the front end is falling off and um, focus all of our attention in here. So I've still got the dash to remove um, 
pretty much entirely actually you get all that off while it's all off I've got all the new trim um, heater controls and um, rods uh, I've got to figure out new uh, wiring to the switches I put in the first time round because they weren't done all that great so I'm going to do that properly this time um, swap trim panels over eventually uh, scrap this uh, dash I was going to try and flog it on but honestly it's just you wouldn't want to replace your whole dashboard for one in this condition to be honest uh, so yeah that's going to go because I've just got two of everything at the minute and it's bloody everywhere I'm just swimming in sprinter parts um, so yeah I think today is going to be focused more in here getting all of stuff like this spaghetti mess out of the way and um, lightening the weight of my van by about a metric ton Bloody snips gone, damn it! Can use that fuse box to um, put my things back basically. Um, diesel heater run through here and all that sort of jazz. What are you? I'm going to say you're for the Telma. Big scary unit, you. What on earth? This is the part where I get scared. <laughs> There's the Talma, that's the Talma. You're the Talma. You're the Talma. Where are you going then? So the Talma is the um, the big brake retarder. Let's see the thing that grabs the prop and acts as like a secondary brake. And it's a very handy piece of kit on a truck this heavy. So, I need to wire that back up. So, on here, we want two fuse box 7.5 amp. And a new lot. You're on earth. Okay, I need a 10 mil for you. Where are you going? You're going to there. You're going down here. Where are you going? What's going on here then? Oh, I'm going to say you're going to the little lamp. Navigating the sea of floor wires had got me as far as I could go. Now I need to get behind the dashboard because a lot of this runs behind that and start unplugging things. Again, the nice thing about having that donor van to strip down was I've done all this before, so I've got a little bit more knowledge going in and doing my own van. But that doesn't make it any less nerve-wracking, especially when you're pulling it back to the stage I'm going to, and it's fairly modern, so there's a lot of parts. On top of that, there's ambulance wires crammed everywhere, and every wire that I snip just reminds me that I cannot go backwards. Think this looks overwhelming? You ain't seen nothing yet.
ti. A lot of this is um, required, but a lot is also not. And this is what I meant by it's all still left behind the dashboard. I can't even remember what half of these did, but they don't do anything now. So it's all coming out. But unfortunately, it does like to tuck itself around and into the loom and then back out again and splice off of the things and oh, it's just oh this one was not built to be repurposed put it that way oh ah, it's a bit more so oh. but yeah getting rid of it will definitely help me out in the long run I mean why did you put that through there unreal still more some relays here and I don't know what any of them do oh that's just on there so that plate can come off but uh, yeah the more I pull apart and especially over there um, the original fuse box that sits under the steering rack that got stuck on the bolt started spinning I was just like oh, what if I can't get it off or what if I snap it and then need it but I think we're past that point now. I don't think I could go back, even if I wanted to. Um, and I don't want to. That's what I keep got to remind myself. I, I don't want to go back. I don't want that bloody gearbox. I want the van to be usable again. <laughs> Every time I stop and think, I just start having heart palpitations. I wonder just how far I've pulled my vehicle apart. I need to get some light sorted in here. It is so dark at night and it's dark early because it's winter. Got that light there and that's illuminating me so I probably look like Anne Boleyn. No idea what that was. So, um, <laughs> oh, that's a problem. Are you serious? There's no way they haven't put the hole in there. There's supposed to be a hole here for the um, gear linkages. And I just assumed there'd be a plate there, but it's actually nothing there. <laughs> You're joking. There's no way that tunnel's a new panel. Or is it just... Uh, it can't be under here. It's got to be there. Where are you? Okay, that, that's, that's a slight issue. Here we go. This is where all the, the shit begins. Yeah, if only I knew at this point how bad that shit was going to get. Making my way through the rat's nest of old wiring, um, pulled a fair bit out, still a lot to go. But I've just found one of the old functions that makes me chuckle. Always a bit broken. Caution. Diesel fuel only. Caution. Diesel fuel only. That used to sound every time you opened the fuel flap which you can imagine scared the absolute crap out of me when I'd not long picked the van up. Turned up at quite a busy petrol station with the van still basically looking like an ambulance to a loud Caution! Diesel fuel only! Yeah, I jumped back against the fuel pump, looked up to the entire forecourt looking at me and each other like 
Did that ginger guy just steal an ambulance? We can get rid of that, I think. Don't need you. Yeah. With everything disconnected and the ECU out of the way, I could now start to pull all the dash loom out of the bulkhead. But like everything on this strip down, it was putting up a fight, so required some salsa dancing apparently. Want to see a really big pile of wire? That is just out of the cab, only the ambulance side of it, and that's not even all of it. Okay, now it's all of it. This pile weighs roughly as much as me. Later on after work, Emma popped in to get some last few bits done on her van before we set off for a test run up in Scotland. Having been on my own all day, going slowly around the bend looking at a mountain of wires, decided a good use of my evening was to go and get in her way instead. The lime in the coconut. <laughs> she then informed me that I have a little something on my face. Oh, wow. Ooh. With the messing round out of the way, we both got stuck back in and put in a late shift tonight. That morning the engine came out, catching us up to where I left you in the last video. It came out smooth as silk, but again, we've done all this once before, so had a bit more of an idea of how to go about it. Good morning. <laughs> I've got man flu again. Wonderful. However, this morning, something very tasty arrived. So this wing is completely done. He's going. Well, that was not clever, was it, Lance? Well, so you're hitting your head a lot lately. What's wrong with it? You, my rusty, distorted friend, are going. Still attached? How? Ah, oh, surprise, surprise, another part putting up a fight. More salsa. Oh, will you just release? Oh, oh you're missing an eye, you little kid. Ooh. I can't remember just why I gave up taking the rest of the wing off, okay. but I did and came back to a layer, uh, but I forgot to put a camera out. Bollocks. Ooh. Well, now that the engine's out, um, it gives a lot more room to get to everything <clears throat> and pull the rest of the things out that need to come out. So the loom that comes out of that corner there runs down here and underneath. That would have been a nightmare with the engine in. Um, steering rack, doable, semi-impossible to do with the engine in. Um, 
exhaust flexi, engine mounts, good clean up of the whole engine bay and get it re tarted up, welded and painted. <coughs> yeah, just um, it's a lot easier to get to everything. I've also took out the HVAC and wiper mech so the, the lower mileage ones can go back in. Um, and yeah, just, just get this area sorted out really. So I think today's aim is to get the last of the wiring out. Once that's out, I can sort of see where I'm at and see light at the end of the tunnel. Because um, every time I'm taking stuff out at the minute, it's like, there's no going back. So once the new loom's in and placed, the new dash can start to be put back in and I can start to put things back on. And it's like every sensor that gets clicked back in, I'm like, right, I haven't forgot that one. That's not going to be a point of where have I missed. Not exactly a small job, but I'll be honest, after removing all that ambulance electrics, <laughs> this feels like a doddle. You just that out, out, the cab bit out, under the floor, done. How hard can it be? I've just caused a leak. No! I took great pleasure in removing the semi-automatic gear stick. It's now the last remaining culprit responsible for the hellish drive of my van. So seeing the back of it felt pretty good and reinforced the reason why I'm doing all this in the first place. Now the last section of the loom that holds all the fuse boxes and bits that sit under the seat plinths just needs to be fed out of the floor. Where we'd meet the rest of it that's now been pulled out of the bulkhead, under the engine bay and out on the floor. Hey, you want to see modern? My van's now wireless. I knew I shouldn't have said it, it's terrible. All the wiring and where the plugs had to be run was still fresh in my mind, so I didn't want to waste any time and started getting the replacement loom fed straight away. And in goes the new brain. Something I never thought I'd say. This really is Frankenstein's monster, isn't it? It was a bit like, oh no, the donor van's now gone. Um, I've got no point of reference. But I've got Emma's van just over there. So any time I'm like, ooh, where does that go? Or ooh, where's the clutch cable go? So I can just pop the bonnet on hers and uh, see what's what. So, yeah, it's nice to have that just sat there now. <laughs> for most things, not for everything. It was only here, around where the steering column goes, that I really struggled. There was a lot going on here, for obvious reasons. It's where all your controls are. They had to tuck round and clip onto areas so they wouldn't get caught and still reach the steering rack when it goes back in. Yeah, it was a bit of a mind melt. So I kept having to bring in the fuse box, instrument cluster, and even the steering rack, just to suss out where all these plugs have to sit, ready for reconnecting. There you go. About there. And yes, I uh, talk to myself when I work. Uh, oh, okay. About an hour later, the dash was completely rewired and ready to plug back in. The old loom was still under the van. It was still connected to the wiring that runs down the chassis and connects all the rear lights, fuel tank and all that sort of stuff. With both looms now present, I could find a point I could cut them wires and rejoin them. But I was keeping this old loom very close to hand and it would prove crucial later on in the rebuild. 
Difference one, the uh, hole here with the boot and change the size between models. Um, I don't think this hole was original. I think well, it wasn't in the original one anyway, original band. In there. Go on. Huh, okay. That actually worked out not too bad. I can go down there. And along there. Rebuilding the fuse boxes under the seat plinths looks difficult, but I'd helped myself out by labelling everything up, putting all of the relays back where they needed to go before I removed it from the old van, and had everything cable tied tight together, so when I snipped those, it all sort of just fell back to where it needed to go. Having stripped the van this far back, it gave a great opportunity to add some improvements and repairs while I was at it. Having a very often wet spaniel in and out of the cab had started to take its toll, so I took this opportunity to re-weatherproof the cab area, especially where Lance sits that had started to bubble. With the very potent waterproof paint applied, there wasn't a lot left I could do in the cab for tonight. But considering the loom swap was one of the big scary jobs that I was dreading, I was really happy it was in and hadn't caused me any problems, yet. Yeah.